Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our Trouble Series episode number two, getting things started automatically with a game against Yeovil. I'm pretty sure I just butchered the hell out of his name, but you guys are going to see throughout this episode, this was honestly one of the most frustrating things in the world for me to do. For me to sit here and simulate games and watch my team lose, especially whenever we're giving away penalties and stuff like that, it's really frustrating to watch your team kind of crumble because you can't control what they're doing in the game, especially after playing so many career modes. It's hard to watch a team struggle, right? So this this episode's going to cover a lot. I'm covering the entire first half of the season in one episode, and I'm going to be doing this a lot until we get into the higher leagues where things actually start to get interesting because you know this first season i don't really have much control in what players i'm using you know it's just kind of the team that was already there for me instead of really a team that i'm able to put together so you guys are just going to see games going through here we win some we lose some we lose more than we win we're drawing some games but you know nothing's really working out for us um you're also going to be seeing our training going on our little youth star that's coming up, our center defensive mid, uh, Porcari, the Italian midfielder, uh, 15 years old, so can't sign him to a senior contract right now. But I mean, this guy, his training has been incredible. And you guys are going to see throughout this career mode, he's going to be a star, 100%. He's, he's are right now considered a center defensive mid, but he can definitely outgrow that and be a center mid, center attacking mid. He can play all over the midfield, in my opinion. So he's an exciting player for me for the future. Uh, we come up against McCartan, the player that we sold to Wickham in the transfer window. Disappointingly, ended up conceding a goal to him. So, you know, always not fun to concede a goal to a player that you sold off. Picari goes ahead and hits 60 overall right here. I know I'm just kind of like running through stuff, but like I said, that's kind of just what's going to be going on. Um, in this episode, I'm honestly just going to go ahead and spoil it. We are out of all competitions at this point. We end up losing the J Paint Trophy to uh, Scunthrope. You know, right now we're just not ready to take on any of these challenges. I know the board wanted me to get to at least the round of 32, but with the team I have, I'm not confident in doing that, especially simulating games. My entire team is out of form, and I'm not kidding you guys when I say my entire team is out of form. I don't know what to do. I mean, Windows is playing decent, but not great. Key scores a good bit in this series, if I'm being honest. I need Pokari to turn 16 as soon as possible. That's all I'm saying, because I need a player that can just come into the squad and dominate. He needs to come in and just take over things, right? So at this point, you guys saw in the last episode, I managed to sign my first scout. So he's out scouting in England, trying to find the next player that's going to work out for me, right? So I, only, I get, end up getting a player here. This game against Wimbledon, um, kind of just like a little funny thing that ends up happening. Um, I was watching the the treble episode that Japes had put out today. If you guys haven't seen that, make sure you go check it out on his channel. But uh, he's, he ends up getting scored on by Akin Fenwa, which I did as well. And he makes a comment. He's like, you know, maybe I should go after the, the strongest man in the game, right? Try to bring him in. Or maybe he should have done a career mode with Wimbledon. Um, I am playing a little bit in the future, and I will let you guys know that I do try to go after Akin Fenwa. I won't let you guys know yet if I do get him, but um, definitely a player that I wanted to bring in the squad. Even though he's kind of old at this point, I don't think he's really going to leave the league. Um, I don't think he's leaving the game for a while, so I'm going to bring him into the squad, and uh, as I at least I hope so. Um, I haven't actually fi finished his transfer yet, so I don't even know if I'm going to get him, to be honest. So I'm not really trying to hold out on you guys. It's just something that's not really happening, right? So as we come through the season, like I said, nothing's working. My entire defense is out of form. My keeper is out of form. I don't know what to do at this point, right? So I actually start playing around with the team. We're changing the formation. We're changing the players. Every so often in between games, I'm going to show you guys me changing up the lineup, showing you what players are coming into the squad, what players are out of form, which, like I said, is everybody. Uh, with just everything that's going on in the team, right? In this episode, I really wanted to focus on simulating the, uh, the games in the first season. The second half of the season, I don't really focus so much on simulating every game through the sim game option. 
a uh, funny story with that which we'll get into down the road but simulating uh, that way it just it seems like bad luck for me as you guys are going to see in this episode every time I watch these simulations play out I end up losing or I end up drawing and it's it's the most frustrating thing in the world like I said I hate losing I'm such a competitive person at heart that watching my team lose that I'm managing when I literally can't do anything to change how they're playing in the middle of a game it's really frustrating almost made me want to go play football manager for this career mode series that we're doing here but you know FIFA guy at heart definitely wanted to do it in FIFA as much as possible um, so with everything going on with the team in the next transfer window, the January transfer window, I am going to be looking at loaning in a couple players on a couple years, uh, two year loan probably. Um, maybe look for a striker, another pacey player to bring in the squad because yes, my defense is suffering, but I have faith that if I can just bring in a few strikers to really just start scoring more often, that the team will kind of get more comfortable and things will actually end up working out for me. So we're just going to kind of have to suffer through this period. Like I said, this first season, really I'm just trying to survive, try to keep my job, do the best I can so I can come into the next season, get my scouts out there scouting, um, bringing in more players into the squad and just trying to do as much as I can really, right? So, um, like I said, throughout these games, I'm not really commentating over a lot of them because I'm just... I'm simulating through, I'm letting you guys see what's happening. I want you guys to focus on the fact, I don't know if you've noticed it this far in the episode, as you see we're going to sign another center defensive mid, a little frustrating, but he is more defensive minded, um, that's 74 to 90 uh, ish rating, definitely wanted to get him to the squad, Malarkey, he's at a 49 overall right now, but he is 16, the important part here, I am able to sign him whenever I want to. And I just wanted to get his overall up a little bit so I could make sure that he could get into the starting squad as soon as possible, right? So I do let him train um, in two of those training sessions while I'm still focusing on Picari. Because Picari is already, as you guys see, 10 points above his original rating. So he's growing incredibly fast. He's such an exciting player to watch. Japes was right when he said, it's addicting watching young players grow in training. Because it happens so fast, but... What I was talking about, as you guys see, I changed my formation again. I went from four in the back to five in the back to try to keep out goals. Now I'm doing a three in the back, just trying to score as much as possible at this point, right? But red cards happen all the time, and so do penalties when you simulate games. I don't know if that's overall or if that's just with me and this team, but it's like every game, somebody on my team gets hurt, gets a red card, or gives away a penalty, and... I don't know what to do. It's, I mean, it's actually killing this team. I can't win games when I'm giving away penalties, missing penalties, getting injured, and getting yet two yellow cards, too many yellow cards over a period of time, or red cards in general. And I mean, like I said, competitive guy here, hate watching my team lose. So, you know, I'm changing players week in, week out. Nothing's working. None of the players are playing well. Everybody's out of form. So I think honestly, looking back on it, after all my players went out of form, I should just left the players I had and just played them as much as possible till they got back in form. But honestly, guys, I don't know if it would have ever happened. I mean, nothing was working. I don't know if I was playing the wrong formation. And that's why I kept changing things up or if you know, it was just the players and I had nothing to do with it or I couldn't really do anything for them. You guys are going to see Malarkey is growing incredibly fast. It's honestly like, it, no, it's kind of underrated, but if you actually watch their individual stats go up, they grow so much. Like their overall is obviously growing all the time, but to watch their individual stats grow is insane. They're growing all the time. As you guys see, two yellow cards. Stinson, my like 18 year old center mid that's like 49 overall, two yellow cards early on in the game, we end up getting a red card, losing another game. And that's, it's literally just the story of the first half of the season. It, it felt like I could never play the same team week in, week out, even if I wanted to, because somebody would get a red card. Somebody somewhere would get a red card. And it was just incredibly frustrating to watch. So, um, like I said, a little bit of frustration there. It is what it is. Uh, hopefully the second half of the season goes better for me. 
the transfers. Like I said, I wanted to make sure that I brought in a few, um, a few attackers in the next window just to kind of help me survive the next half of the season. I just want to end up in the middle of the table, to be honest. They don't, the board doesn't want me to end up in the bottom four, basically. I want to try to aim for that 12th, 13th, 14th position. So hopefully we can get there. Um, Pokari up to 65 overall. And I want you guys to think about this as this episode's kind of coming to the close here in the next few games. Pokari is already 65 overall at 15 years old. By the end of this season, I'm thinking he's probably going to be about a, hopefully a 70 to 74-ish range. And he's going to be in my starting squad next year in League 2. A 70 rated player is incredible for me. It gives me opportunities to continue to grow him, play him in my starting squad week in, week out, which is why I kind of wanted to start focus. I should have focused on his stamina earlier. That was kind of my fault. I mean, it doesn't turn out too bad. His stamina is not too bad, but I could play him week in, week out, continue to grow him. And who knows, maybe I end up selling him off to just bring in more players, bring in more scouts, which is the big thing. I need to bring in more scouts to bring in more players, right? So, because I don't want to transfer players, because when I get in the habit of transferring players, I try to get players that nobody else gets, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're strengthening your team as much as possible. So, I end up going for the same players every time, and I just don't want to do that in this series. Even the players that I transfer, uh, or I loan in rather, um, are the ones that I want to go after at least. Um, they're not too big of a name, I guess you could say, as this last game is coming down. Dag and Red, bottom of the league uh, fight, basically. As I show you guys, Malarkey's 77 to 91, and um, Picari is get, could possibly end up being a 94 overall. So that is the end of the episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy. And until the next episode, I'll see you guys later.